My name is Linda. I have the shop on Main Street, Hyannis, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. For people who um, are interested in the paint inlays and you want to play with them on a smaller scale, this is a great, great project for you. And this is the, the new, brand new release paint inlay called Trump Loy. It comes in gray and it comes in this blue. Gray is called Laurel. This is the back of the package and it shows you ideas that you can do with them. So see, right? You have these little details that you can butt up against each other. You have four of these and two of these and then two panel ones. So they'd be great for the doors of, of, of a piece. And of course, all the instructions and it shows you, again, on each sheet of paper what, what's in here. And I have cut up these two sheets because there's six panes. I kind of thought, you had to kind of think this one out because mine have like panels. So there's six on each, so 12 in total. And I was trying to decide like how I could get like this and this and this and this, and it just wasn't gonna line up. These didn't come, long story short, I ended up cutting these on, the matching pages about mm, a little more than halfway and that filled the whole panel I'll show you in a second and then the rest of them I pieced with a portion of these and I pieced them together for the opposite panel so it's off on off on off on so see I have all my little pieces save all the pieces you guys and I even have smaller ones set aside to, because they're so tiny they'll just disappear so quickly all right, so here's the paint side. It's a little more vivid. And then this is the side that we're concerned with, because this is the side we want to be looking at, the, the side with the, with the grid lines. I don't know if you can make that out. All right, that way it helps you to line things up, center and all that, so you have these nice grid lines. And it's also important to note that there is a margin. Even when there's a full-out pattern, like the rose chintz or the grisaille toile, there is a margin around each page and you want to cut around all that if you're lining up a large pattern onto a large piece. Um, in our case, because we have um, some sort of contours and we're working with the fabric and it's, you know, it's not super stiff and all that, um, I found it better to um, go ahead and um, cut them as close as I could. Um, because as I was putting them on the lampshade, okay, I was just trying to cut out the strips, right? I found that as it was trying to dry, it was kind of pulling in and it was distorting and pulling the um, inlay in ways I didn't want it to. So by cutting it around, because of these contours, see it, it scoops out, I think it's best that you cut close around. Some people do that anyways. It probably helps with some of the um, ghosting on the, uh, uh, outside of the the paint inlay. So let me show you what we're going for. So here's the fabulous lamp. And it's it's a lovely lamp, don't get me wrong. But for me, it's too much. I did clean these really good. And I did try to just kind of go over and just rough like tack, really like lightly, you know, tack sand these. I don't want to go through this lovely finish, but I do want to kind of rough it up, okay? Again, I'm just trying to just Get the areas that I think really need to get done. And you see, I'm not, I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. I just want to add like a little bit of tooth to this. And I've already kind of done this, so this is just for your purposes mostly. All right, and then I want to clean it again. So we wipe it all down and we paint these. Well, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to start working on the lampshades. So we went from that to this so far. Eek! Right? I think this is so cool. So one panel still uh, has it all done. This one is all done. And these still have the inlays and we'll take these off in a little bit. All right, they're, they're well dried. It's been a good hour and a half or so. Oh, this one's still a little wet. So for the paint inlays, I have one coat of uh, chalk style paint on here and I used this brush, okay. It's a worn down old hog's hair. I mean, look, it's not even worn down evenly, okay. 
This is the one I typically start my fabric painting with because um, these are shades, they're, they're fabric. If you're working with plastic, that's a whole different thing. You're gonna wanna have perhaps the right primer for that uh, to stick. Again, work with your retailers. Um, and what I did is I just took um, my paint and I dipped it in it. Um, and then I actually took like a little dip into water, right? The smallest amount. And then I just really worked it in, okay? I really just scrub, 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 scrub. Just, and then kept getting my little paint. And what I wanted to do, okay, by scrubbing this in very tediously, is I gave it a good first coat, okay? Because this coat, I feel we should do um, a little bit heavier with our paint because of the inlay. If this was, um, if I was stamping, I would probably still scratch on another coat or two, depending on how long it takes to coat. But because we're working with the paint inlays, you gotta find your, your happy medium, okay? And what I'm doing now is I'm giving it a light little sand. Whenever you paint fabric, it's just a good idea to sand it. So you put on your, your, your paint on the thinner side. I'd rather go thinner and sand between the layers really quick than go too thick, okay? And then you wanna kinda wipe, wipe off all the, the dust. And now we're ready to go. I already have my little layout all in order here. They're all cut out. And I'm gonna start with this back side here where the seam is. And again, I'm gonna get my water. I have a spray mist bottle. I mean, if you don't have one of these, it doesn't have to be. If you just have a nice spraying bottle, just clear out any of the um, residue of whatever was in there to begin with. So this is my first coat. It's really dense, all right, kind of rough. Not rough, it's still soft, but it's something I, can, I don't have to worry about ruining because I'm scraping it so much. And then for this coat, I was using this one. Again, it's, it's, see, it's all spread open, so it's already starting to get to that point, but I'm gonna put the paint on a little bit looser this time. Now my water, I think it's important to note that you use a water that um, is like distilled or the, at least the bubbler water, a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, and let's just start. I'm gonna get the whole panel. Now I'm gonna have to fix some of these seams, but I'm waiting because they're going through a lot still, all right? Um, at the end, if some of them come loose, I will fix them. You can also spray your brush, and I'm just gonna get that whole pane or the panel best I can. We can always touch up later. It's our base coat, so you can touch up with base coat. So I don't want it like dripping wet, okay? I want it wet enough where it'll stay wet for me to apply the paint inlay. And again, I'm going to spray that paper. So if you decoupage, you may have heard that by spraying the paper, it stretches the paper so it has less wrinkles. The same is true for this technique. Okay, um, if you're going for texture, go for it. I left some wrinkles in my decoupage paper because I wanted the wax to kind of add a lot more texture to it. So I'm gonna start from the top. I'm gonna try and keep things centered. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I have a damp rag, all right? And I'm gonna start smoothing this. I don't, and a lot of people will use a brayer if you're doing this on furniture, but a brayer won't do us any good on this, really. So we just want to kind of start getting that laid down. We're going to wet this some more. And you, I mean, you're still going to get, if you get some wrinkles, you can work them so they're not like where the inlay is going to lay down. And if you get little skips, hopefully I'll have some. I say that because I want to show you what I do to, to fix like little wrinkle skips. All right, let's do another panel. Okay, give that a little spray to kind of hold up. And then this is our pieced one. So this is the bottom of one of these. And this one, I, I just decided I want this to touch the bottom. So I'm starting this one from the bottom. You know, whatever you, however, whatever your project is. Oh, I forgot to spray it. 
Let's go ahead and just do that now. See how it just popped out the wrinkles? I mean, the minute it gets wet, it starts to wrinkle. So if you wet it first, you'll get the stretch. So you can work with that in the moment. But see, the paint comes through this parchment paper. It's very porous. There's like a little spot here. I'm not sure that the paint is very wet there. So I'm just taking a little brush, all right? And I'm just gonna tuck in a little paint right here. And then there's a piece to go on top. And all it is is it's one of the sections and there was a ball here. I took a section that I liked and I cut the ball to fit this little point. All right, that's just me doing me, worked for me. I mean, you'll have to play with your own projects, all right, to see what you like and how the pattern's gonna go. You know, maybe you don't have panes or panels, so it wouldn't be a big deal for you. I'm just making sure I have paint there. And you wanna make sure you're putting the paint side down. I forgot to check the last one, but I think I'm good. I see pretty dark grid lines. Okay, now after I got a couple down, I'm gonna give everything on the back side a spray. Just make sure everything's touching down again. Because this part is what's really gonna start activating the paint on your inlay to stick into your paint on your surface. Ta-da! <laughs> So I see there's gonna be a couple wrinkles here that just don't wanna lay down, and that's okay. We have the technology. All right, so again, one more panel. Oh, that was actually kind of a lot of paint. So you know what I'm gonna do? Before it really soaks the fabric, and let's just blot out some of it. So I put a first coat down because you want this paint inlay to be you know, we want to make sure that this part that your background is covered, whether it's a lampshade or if it's a tabletop or a piece of artwork. All right, I'm going to spray this again. It's, I use my bubbler water. In this one, I'm more concerned about the top than I am the bottom. Actually, no, I want the bottom. I take it back. So you want to, you know, you got a little time, a little wiggle room there. And let's see. I'm just trying to get this as wrinkle-free as possible. Oops. Oh, that was already activating. We'll see what happens with that one. I don't want to mess with this one too much. Spray that. Right? Easy peasy. The whole rest of these we're gonna gotta peel off. So I'm gonna reactivate the paper. I know it seems kind of silly, right? We did all that work to get it, you know, on there and then we would dry it and now I'm wetting it again. What the heck, right? I'm going to do at least the two and see how we do because I'm hoping that I have to show a little fix or I might just have to explain it. All right, so you, you wet it, give it a, you know, 30 seconds or so. Now, depending on your paint line, again, work with your retailer. Um, if there's a lot of, um, if it does cure, then you don't want your paint inlay to set too, too long. And that's going to be take, that'll take a little play time on, unless your retailer has the, the magic number for you. And of course it depends on your paint application. If you put the paint on heavy, then um, you, you'll have a longer dry time. Some people like putting the paint on thicker. Some people like putting the paint on thinner. Be careful with these because you know what? We're gonna get another use out of these, maybe another two uses. I find all of them are different. So that was a two piece one, right? And we wanna lay that flat to dry. Let's see how my little seam worked out. Nice. So it's just that one wrinkle that I see so far. So let's pull this back off. And let me show you what I do. So right here, there's this little white line going across. That's not a light white line, it's a little wrinkle where the paint didn't really dry there or it just wasn't allowed to touch down there. I'm thinking the paint was still wet in that little wrinkle. 
So I'm just going to touch a little bit of paint right in that little spot. Just dab in a little paint. And since we haven't moved this, I'm going to put it right back down. Let's hit this with a blow dryer. You could do this after the fact. All right, let the paint kind of dry. I guess I'm kind of risking getting a halo effect right now, but it's a video, so I'm, I'm, I'm risking it. But you could just match up the, the, the pattern, put that little paint in there, and match the inlay right over it, and let it dry like this as well. All right, so let's see if that was enough. All right, so it's a little bit lighter because I didn't let it dry a long time, but all right, I don't have a wrinkle there anymore. So that is nice. So sometimes you do get like a halo effect around your inlays. And all I do is I just kind of take a little bit of my base coat, okay? You don't want to sand this right now um, because, you know, it, that paint, it, it, it's, it's, it's raw paint and those pigments will move, okay? You'll just activate the pigments and you'll have a hot mess. I have done like a color wash, color blend um, technique with the paint inlays. And I did it with paint, but if you wanted to make sure that, you know, you're getting enough paint down for the inlay, you can always take um, and put a, a, a layer of top coat. And then I would probably do a, another top coat and put the inlay into that top coat. All right, so let's see how this one's doing. So I just touch up around there. I can sand smooth little areas after I get it sealed. It's starting to give me a little resist, so it's already kind of drying a little bit. So let me just show you. This time I will go ahead and take the whole thing off, and I have another wrinkle down here. One at the top, one at the bottom. Figures, right? After this dries, I want to let that dry a little bit because I don't want to get a halo. That's kind of wet right now. And I'll just take like a fine line brush. This is actually too fat to do this one with. Um, and paint across there paint across here and then line it up and set it down. That being said, let me grab something. Remember I said this is paint? You can activate this paint and blend it, okay? I have a wrinkle right here. If I let, if I let this wet, okay, keep doing this until the paint activates and blend it. This is how you would do the blue flow, by the way, is you would take a brush at the edges of the design. What you could do also is, remember I had these tiny, tiny scraps? These are paint palettes, right? So go ahead and wet it. And now you have the matching color right here. Just blending that in. And now it's all joined up together. Let's see, where is it? No more wrinkle. Super easy, right? Well, let me show you for a top coat. Remember how we just activated that paint? You want to be careful on how we seal this now. If I try and brush on a top coat, it's going to be a hot mess, isn't it? Because it's very water reactive. So, again, if you can get a right sprayer. Go through your, your arsenal of kitchen cleaning supplies and find one that sprays well, okay? And then you got to take it another step and see if you can get it to take like a 50-50 mix of your clear coat, top coat, whatever that may be. Again, work, what am I gonna say? work with your retailers. Work with your retailers, all right? A lot of people buy the acrylic spray at the, at the big box stores. You could do that. I just, I, I, I'm not that fancy. I'm just going to take a, a, a little applicator sponge and my top coat, all right? And I'm going to pounce it. Okay. So I'm going to go up and down, up and down, up and down like that. Don't overwork it. We're going to do another layer of this just to make sure everything got covered. Super easy. And then after this, I can, I can seal it. Oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and fix this one. Here's my palette. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this one too. All right, so we're just going to blend this together so it's not like a little break in the, like the wrinkle, okay? Get some more blue from our palette. 
Okay, so now it's not as obvious. And I could, you know, you could take all the time you want with that. And then we're just going to tap, tap, tap. I can brush on after I know this is sealed well. And I can wax after this, but you gotta be careful with this part of it. You wanna spray it on or tap it on. That's easy, right? Just for, you know, the fun of it. Let's just show if anyone's really new. Look at all the fancy details. The gold is too much for me here. I mean, the lampshade would look great on here, but I think we need to tone this down just, just a little bit, right? So all I did is just literally paint it. I've already um, cleaned it. You can see like, it's gonna take a couple coats, but you wanna just really, this first coat, just really start scratching and getting it in there. Anyways, after I cleaned it, I did tack sand it best I can. There's a lot of details. But even if you're just going over the parts that stick out, those are the parts that will um, have the most issues because those are the parts that stick out that get handled. So at least if you can get those a little tack sand, that would be awesome. Um, sure, you could prime this, but I kind of want to go back to the gold and I don't want to have two-tone whites. This is like a shabby chic little piece. I don't mind a little shabby chic still. This is really pretty. All right, so this is like super easy. Just, I'm just getting it in there. There's not a lot of detail to worry about getting a, a brush stroke, right? We're just trying to get it in there. On this um, panel here, right? I wanna get it in there, up and down, all around. And then I could kind of go like that. You know, this, this'll dry, right? After all that is done, on a, I did a second coat. I might have even toyed with a third coat in some of these areas. I might just touch up some areas, but I had to get going. I have these little sanding sponges, okay? They're, they're, they're really fine grit. If you can get ones that have already been used several times and there's, it's really fine, in this, in this case, all right, I'm not, there's no wood. I'm just trying to get back to this gold, all right? and I'm just gonna rub over the tops. Now using the chalk paint, okay, when people go to handle this, right, if it should wear off, it's gonna wear off in these spots, in the parts that are raised. So that's why I'm not, I wasn't concerned too much if I should use a primer or not. If you wanna make sure that the paint doesn't, if you wanna prim in proper finish, um, I might use a primer on something like this. It's not like this is wood. And every now and then, whenever you're doing this sanding, keep a check on yourself and wipe it back with a rag because sometimes you don't see that you've actually sanded more than you, than you thought. I just might do a little rub of a, of a gold paint or gold gilding wax just over the top. If I'm using a wax, I definitely would want to do that last. All right, um, if you're using a top coat, like a, a water-based top coat, just go ahead and, and, and you, after you're done and you've wiped off all the dust, right? Go ahead and you, you paint on the top coat just like we painted this. And you could put a wax on after if you wanted to give it an antiquing wax, you could do that. If, you're, if, you're, if you like to do a wax finish, you're good to go right now. You could just wax right now, right? Just rub it on. And then, whatever, if you, do, if you put the top coat or if you put the wax, now is the time after all that's done, right? You've got their seal on, you could take your little bit of gold wax and put that on. If you're doing a metallic gold paint, um, go ahead and rub that on before you put your top coat or your wax on. But be mindful, you probably want to do it with some sort of a sheen so it keeps that goldy shine. So. You know. All right, so that's it, you guys. That had to be one of my simplest projects in a heck of a long time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay sassy. Bye-bye.